so to answer this, really, I have to go back to my Clinton days, which will probably undo years of therapy. <laughs> so I may have to charge you for this. So before I start, I just say that a lot of what I'm going to say is common sense. I don't wish to sound patronising, um, because so much of what we do is common sense. So just bear with me. And, um, and I may have come across a little bit cynical, but again, 23 years at Clinton, you'll excuse me. I think the most important thing, really, and it is very obvious, is you have to stand out. The buyer is seeing, they're either dealing with 180 different suppliers or they're seeing 180 different new potential ones. And, there are, and it won't be hard to stand out. And the cynical part of me will say this, that, that after 15 years in a buying department, you will be sadly disappointed in, in the quality of presentation person that will come past you. So it isn't hard to stand out. So there's two ways of doing that, really. So thinking about you or your company first, that's the big one. You've got to stand out. You've got to do what you say you're going to do, and you've got to be the most reliable and trustworthy supplier that they deal with, because they will deal with a lot of people that will say, I'll send you that spreadsheet, I'll email you that information, I'll get you those samples, and they don't. And the buyers, and I know it's a cliche, but the cliches are cliches because they're true, they are so busy, they will not follow up on that. The best suppliers are the ones that you know will do what you want them to do. And you can pick the phone up to them and say, do me a favor. You need to be that reliable supplier. Basic stuff I know, but meeting etiquette. Send an agenda before you get there. Make sure that everyone is clear as to why you're going. You'll be amazed at the times I've sat in front of a, bar, uh, of a pitch and they start talking about something and I'm like, I'm sorry, that's not my department. You want the gift team. Honest to God, that's happened to me a dozen times in my time at Clinton Park. So send an agenda, make it clear, it's professional, that will make you stand out as well. Send a thank you afterwards and a follow-up. They will not have made very good notes. I can't remember the last time I pitched to Asda, Tesco, Sainsbury's, any of those guys that are very busy and they made one single note. They will not make notes. You make the notes, you send them on, and don't be, don't be scared to follow up. Because again, you are doing them a favor. If they liked one of your products, they may have forgotten they liked it, and you remind them they liked it, and they'll take it. Um, try and be on the front foot. Uh, and, and what I mean by that is tell them about any problems before their boss finds out about the problems. Because it will be their boss that finds out that the product was late, it was price stickered wrong, it wasn't up to the, the right quality standards. I would really recommend you get on the phone and you say, I've got a problem, but this is what we're gonna do about it. That I know there's a tendency to think oh, they'll never find out. Trust me, they will. But even worse, they won't. Their boss will. Their boss will be doing a floor walk in, a, in, in one of the stores and they'll find it. And there's nothing worse than the buyer being told that one of their suppliers has let them down. So I would recommend be on the front foot. Um, provide solutions, not just more questions. They get a million questions thrown at them all the time. We had a meeting. You like this product. I'm going to send you this. I'm going to, I propose we put it into this many stores. Here's the prices before you ask for them. You've got to spoon feed them because they generally are just too busy. This is a, 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 this is a really silly one, but I used to have a buyer that worked for me that delisted, <laughs> delisted a supplier because when they came to print out the spreadsheet, it printed out on 34 different pages. The supplier hadn't taken the time to format the information. It sounds so silly and so petty. But being able to press print and the thing comes out on one bit of paper, it, it's a big deal. Because it just gives that impression that your business is switched on. Of course it's gonna come out in the right format because I wouldn't have sent it to you otherwise. It really makes you stand out. Um, go for the long-term relationship. It's very easy to sell some product in and do a bit of a deal and walk away and go, blimey, got away with that or that'll never sell. That's a very short-term solution because if that buyer <laughs> is worth their weight in salt. <coughs> they will twig and they will find out and they'll come back. You want to be dealing with that buyer for as long as they are the buyer. And again, just be prepared for that one. They will change very, very regularly. But they move about. If you upset a buyer at Sainsbury's, they will turn up at Asda, I promise you. So make sure you are never the person that upsets the buyer. Um, know the customer's customer. So the most impressive people that I used to see at Clinton's, or my, my, my buyers did, were the ones that would come and say, I've been into four of your stores, you're missing this. Or I went into that store and I was listening at the till and the customers were asking for cards with cats on. I've got some cat cards. It makes a real big difference if the buyer feels you understand <coughs> their customer. 
And I know there's a lot of segmentation stuff that's available for people at the supermarkets. They'll talk about Janets and Johns and all the different people. If you know what those customer segmentations are to start with, <coughs> you will stand out. Um, if you're the owner, and I think Jed mentioned this earlier, you have to leverage that. That is the most powerful thing you have because you're the decision maker. The buck stops with you. You're sitting in front of a buyer and they want to buy that and they want an extra penny off. You can decide whether you do that or not. Make a big deal of that. They'll see a lot of national account managers and if there are any in the room, I do apologize. I haven't met many that I would give a job to and that's the honest truth. I can think of three or four national account managers in our industry. Three of them work for me at Danilo at the moment. And that's the gospel truth. I can't think of many more. So it's worth, you are the boss, you are the decision maker. You can say yes and no, of course. But I really leverage that. Can I just interrupt that? Of course. I was a national counsel. You're the fourth one. But I mean, I think I would endorse everything that Brett said, and it's quite interesting having spent many years going selling to Clintons. Uh, Yes, you've sat there yes many I have. I've sat in many times, um, but I think you know he makes some really, really important points. But I would say you know quite a few of you ring in and ask about this issue of discounts and and what to, um, to do in a meeting. Obviously, you are the decision maker, and that is great for the buyer. But don't feel pressurised by that. I mean, I always, I wasn't the decision maker. I had Caroline Gardner to go, or, or somebody behind me, so I could say, well, yeah, okay, I'm going to go back and speak to Caroline about that. You haven't got that, but I think you are quite within your rights to say, look, I need to go and do my sums on that. Let, let me come back to you. And, you know, don't feel under pressure because you do need to go and check your margin and check that you can do it. And they'll respect that, but as Brett said, make sure you go back. Um, but do, you know, as I say, don't, don't feel that you have to make a decision there and then because I don't think the buyer will expect you to, but they will expect you to go back. Sorry, Brett. Yeah, I no, that's quite agree. Um, if it's a brokered account, you must, must, must build the relationships with both the broker and the buyer. The broker will encourage you not to do that for obvious reasons, but you must do that because both of those people together, and I know Paul's going to talk about brokerage in a moment, but both of those people together form that relationship. Do not deal with one or the other. Deal with them both. Send them both sample sets. Send them both sales numbers. Uh, so that's about you, and then it's your products, and obviously... You know, again, I, I don't claim to be a, a designy, I'm more of a numbers person, so apologies. I know the product is very, very important, particularly to you. Um, so the product's vital, stand out. Trade marketing presentation. When you send your samples in, if that's the way that you choose to do it, make them stand out. The, the amount that you'd get in a brown envelope and you just pour them onto your desk and they just say, at Danilo, we send out trade marketing packs and we have fun with them. So if we send out uh, ladybird cards, then it's, it's in a hamper, it's lashings of gin. We don't send gin. <laughs> not allowed to send gin anymore. But there'll be some gin-flavoured sweets in there. There'll be a little picnic blanket. It's just fun. When we send out stuff for Horrible Histories, it's got little rats in there. And the feedback we get from the buyers is fantastic because they do see a lot of samples. When they turn up in a brown envelope, they're just not very exciting. You've all probably got some fantastic, exciting product. You'll find something that works for your product. Horrible histories, rats, stuff like that that works, you'll find something. Try and embrace the feedback and don't take it personally. I lived with an artist for many, many years and I understand that artists are very passionate about what they do and uh, don't always like to hear that something isn't quite as commercial as it maybe could be. I know that's difficult to take and, and you have to believe in yourself, I understand all of that, but I would just encourage you to try and take that feedback, go away and think about it, and if they're asking you to do it in a different format, a different size, a different shape, find out why, but there's probably a very good reason, and, and just try not to take it too personally. I understand you're incredibly vested in your, in your product. Um, but keep your feedback on, on the ground with the feedback, because sometimes buyers won't be totally honest. They'll tell you that they love it. It's brilliant. It's the best thing I've ever seen. It's fantastic. And you'll never hear from them again. But you may have gone back to your business and started to do loads of stuff because the buyer there said it was fantastic. I would just try and just... Some buyers are uncomfortable in saying no. Some aren't. Um, but some are a bit uncomfortable. So just tease it out. Make sure that it's a genuine interest because you could go away and do a lot of work when you've dealt with someone that maybe just was a bit uncomfortable to say no. 
Um, and this one I've written, it must be important because I put it in bold. Never, ever, 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 ever go to a boss before you've spoken to the buyer. It is the absolute cardinal sin. If you are struggling with one of the buyers, do not feel the need to pick up the phone, even if you know their boss. I worked in a business when that happened all the time, and I can't tell you the damage it did to relationships. If you've got a problem, talk to the buyer. If you're not getting where you, where you need to go to, explain to them that you are going to escalate it, but don't escalate it without telling them because it will bite you on the bum and they will turn up working in another company, as we said earlier. Um, and what a buyer is looking for, uh, they're just looking, they want to look good. They want to look good in front of their boss and you can help them. If you give them all the right information, you give them some benefit of your knowledge, they can take that to their business, they sell a product <coughs> that sells well, they look good to their boss because that's all they're really looking for. They want promotion and more money and a bigger bonus. And that's it, really. <laughs>